Hey there YouTube, how's it going? Surreal Canine here, back with more Disguy 4, Promise Revisited. Today is 4-13-2019 and I am super excited because the epilogue of Homestuck is finally coming up. At some point. <laughs> but enough about that, we've got some character demos to do. So my plan for these character demos is uh, pretty much identical to Disguy 3. Just going to uh, go through every character and generic character class, go over what abilities they learn, uh, which weapon skills they learn, show off their unique skills. And, uh, and then we're finally going to be done with this guy 4. It's been a big two-year journey, but uh, I mean, I'm kind of happy we took it. In any case, we are going to start with our main characters, the Hades Party. First up, Valva Torres. As you can see, uh, I've kind of uh, taken Valva Torres through the character world a little bit, but uh, it's uh, pretty obvious to tell that attack is his highest aptitude. <laughs> his weapon fortes include swords and spears. He learns six of both, and on the PS Vita, he actually learns the, the tier 9 sword skill as well. There are a couple of characters that do that. Uh, whenever I put like 6 plus on the uh, on their weapon fortes, it means they can learn the tier 9 skill on the PS Vita. In any case, you can see his uh, main ability here is Bloody Battle, which uh, increases his attack every time an enemy is defeated. You know, pretty uh, standard as far as main characters go, I suppose. Absorption absorbs 10% of the defeated unit's stats, which is pretty nice, but uh, unfortunately every character in this game is kind of overshadowed by Tyrant Valvatores. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure when this would come in handy. But it's there, and that's the important part. As for his abilities, other abilities, we get Physical Boost, which uh, increases special physical attack damage by 15%. Again, pretty uh, bog-standard main character fare. And Kendo Black Belt. I'm not sure if this is an ability that's native to him, or if he, uh, or if he went and learned it through uh, Kara World. But yeah, if the enemy has a weapon, your attack is increased by 30%. Pretty nice, so, uh... Let's go to a place. We might as well do the reincarnation site. And we're going to show off against these masked heroes. Here I come. The first skill we shall... Uh, go over is Impaler Prince. It's, uh... Excuse me for a second here. So yeah, uh... F power level, pretty much uh, one of the weakest special abilities. Uh, you can see it's attack range there. No element, but it does restore Valatorez's HP. Which is pretty nice. Uh, do I have Sylvia out here? I do. Let's, uh, let's just give him an extra turn just so uh, we don't have a whole bunch of... Uh... Oh yeah, I forgot how long this animation was. Anyway, next up, Bloody Hole, which... Uh... It's a plus-shaped area around him. Again, pretty sure this is a, an HP-restoring move. I mean, Valatorez is a vampire and all that. It kind of makes sense. Now we're going to uh, watch these guys kill themselves on the... 
Val's counterattack, or maybe not. It's convenient for me. Finally, however you pronounce this thing. It hits eight guys, it's a star element, and it's got D-level power. Which is pretty cool. Uh, you can use this for, uh, for a little bit of grinding. Val learns this at level 80. I forget what level he learns the other skill at, but I think we can assume this is a standard for uh, for all of the main characters. That is not an HP restoring move. Now you must die. Okay. Next up, Fenric, uh, Val Torres's loyal puppy. There's a bee outside and it's a little distracting. <laughs> anyway, Fenric uh, specializes in fixed. Fixed, yes. He specializes in fists. Uh, but he can also learn Axe skills. He learns uh, six of each, as well as the Tier 9 skills for both of them. As for his uh, aptitudes here, you can uh, kind of see he's reincarnated uh, once or twice, but his aptitudes very clearly favor Fists. As for his abilities, we have Tyrant Slave, which increases the... Uh, this description is wrong. It actually increases stats by up to 50% when he is close to Valvatores. Uh, at one tile away, he gets 50% bonus. At two tiles away, he gets 40% bonus, and so on. Revenge increases his stats when the, when the Dispatch Valvatores has low HP. I believe both of these uh, abilities uh, also respond to Tyrant Valvatore, as not just regular Val. Which I suppose is easy to confirm with an experiment. The, uh... The male lady is uh, saying something out there. What is going on out there? And I guess the neighbor's kid is playing out in his front yard. <laughs> anyway. Yep, there, there's that truck. Yep. Okay, I'm getting distracted here. What I want to show off is Fenric's other abilities. Symbol of Loyalty. Uh, shoulder to damage received by Valvatores when adjacent. And Moonlight Thang, which increases his wind damage and also raises his defense against wind. Which is pretty cool. But, uh... Yeah. I kind of want to see what this does. So, uh, let's pull out... Let's pull out a Tyrant Valvatores and a Fenric. See if, uh... See if my suspicions are right. You can see Fenric's stats here. Uh, 8 million. Let's pull out Tyrant Valve. Go to Hades! Oh yeah, so he definitely responds to Tyrant Val. Actually, come to think of it. Can I, uh... Oh, okay. So if he's being held up by Tyrant Val, his stats don't go up. <laughs> That's something, I guess. Forgive me. Okay, let's, uh... See if we can... Well, for one thing, I, I missed, so uh, there's that, I guess. I'll show you sardine power. Darkness, devour everything. We uh, we kind of didn't really need to see this attack early, but. Yeah. 
I'm kind of seeing a preview of Tyrant Vow here. Zero? Oh, yeah, Fenric definitely took the shot. Okay. Let's, uh... Let's reset the map and uh, show off Fenrir's, uh, Fenrir, Fenric's attacks. I'm going. First up, Swift Power Shot, Wind Type. It's kind of like a ranged triple strike. But the cool thing is he can use it whether or not he has a fist. <laughs> All right, let's get a uh, Sylvia out here. Oh, I thought that was supposed to cancel the animation. Why you? Why you? Don't it? Anyway, dual canine attack. D level, also wind element. Fenric seems to like his wind a lot. Got puppy familiars. Pretty cool. Finally, Vanergand, or however you pronounce that. I'm a student of computer science, not Norse mythology. Danger puppy! So yeah, that is Fenric. Alright, next up, we have everybody's least favorite character in this game. Uh, besides maybe Axel. The one, the only, Fuka Kazumatsuri. That was the wrong uh, menu. She specializes in swords and axes, with her uh, learning six of each, plus the tier 9 axe skill. She also learns the target lock spell, since technically she's supposed to be a prinny. In any case, uh, her aptitudes definitely favor attack, and her core ability, Dream Girl, uh, boosts her defense against special attacks, so uh, I mean, say what you will about Fuka, she does make a pretty good tank, at least during the main story. Muscle Enhancement, I'm not entirely sure why she has that. Let's uh, go to the ability shop and see if I forgot to put something on her. No, I definitely put everything on her. Alright, whatever. Let's go see her other abilities. Revenge Throw triples the damage caused by a pretty explosion. Uh, I don't know if this uh, refers to her throwing a prinny or her exploding by being a prinny. Uh, it actually, is that a thing you can do in this game? I don't think that's a thing you can do in this game. I guess it means when she throws a prinny then. Prinny Annihilation. Increased stats at 20% times the number of defeated prinnies. So uh, if you want to deploy her and kill a bunch of prinnies, that's... Gonna be a lot of stats for her, I guess. But enough about that. Let's show off her special skills. This is it! This is it. Fuka learns three special skills, and I think she learns the third one in Chapter 8. Uh, anyway. Bombatstick. It's, uh, kind of like a... It's kind of like Boulder Crush, but fire element and ranged. Pretty nice. Get 
It's also got a, a very chaotic animation. <laughs> Alright, whatever. Let's not, uh... Oh, we're gonna get... Okay, well, whatever. In that case, I'll get just the uh, reset. So cool that you can do that in this game. This is it. Next up, Glorious Hitter, which is uh, another baseball attack. I wonder if she was on her middle school's baseball team. You are ready for that? Oh, yep, that's something. <laughs> Alright, finally. Pretty Kaiser Double Cross. Let's go. I forgot to show off its... Uh... Oh, I'm sure if you freeze frame you can see what it does. So uh, yeah, she summons a giant Pringer X. <laughs> and I got a stealing hand out of that, which is pretty nice. So, uh, you recruit Fuka by clearing Chapter 2. Pretty nice. Anyway... I, I just want to see her special skills. Not those special skills. Yeah, D level, fire attack. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, next up, we have probably everybody's favorite character in this game, Desko! We only put up with Fuka because she is Desko's big sister. Desko is a monster type unit that magic changes to swords. Uh, you can see her attack, her uh, her aptitudes very clearly favor attack. Uh, her three abilities are final boss setting, which increases attack when allies are adjacent to her. Three transformations, which increase all of her stats when her HP is low. And mana scarcity, which uh, reduces the mana she gains, but increases her attack power even further. She's very much a uh, heavy-hitting type of monster. And you can see... No. You can see her, uh, her attacks right here. Uh, well, aside from her magic change, uh, they don't quite have the power to back up her uh, high attack. But eh, maybe that's fine. If I didn't make the Yoshitsuna first, I probably would have favored Desko in my uh, fight against Ball. But, let's show off exactly what she's capable of. Not there. As you can see, her stat, her attack power went up by 20% from that, but that's not important right now. Final Boss Arises has kind of a weird uh, area of effect. It's a bit of an unwieldy move, but uh, it's there. And it's Star Elemental. All of her attacks seem to be Star Element. <laughs> Pretty cool. Next up, True Godly Weapon. It's got a plus shaped area of effect uh, in a range of four panels from her. Toffee.
She's definitely got the uh, got the Ultra Pip vibe going, <laughs> which I'm pretty sure even Fox has noticed by now. Of course, uh, given Pip is a superhero and uh, Desco wants to be the final boss, I'm not sure it's gonna work out. There are bees outside. So, uh, yeah, definitely a, uh, a big area of attacker. Area of attacker. Yeah, you know what I'm talking about, guys. Of course you do. Anyway, um... Oh, wait, we forgot to show off her magic change skills. I'll get into a rhythm on this eventually, guys. Don't you worry about that. Also, uh... Whatever, I guess we're here again. Let's uh, get Valatorez out here because he is a sword user. Evil Sword Balmung. It's a giant sword. D level. Pretty nice, I guess. No, oh, no, we're using the Blade Chalk style. I mean, look, look at Desco's weapon form. It is just pretty cool all around. It's like a, it's like one of those God Eater types of weapons. <laughs> just line the inside with fangs, and that's pretty much what you have, really. Martial Transformer. Yeah, uh, apparently Desco can split into, uh, pretty much a zillion copies of herself. That's pretty cool. My respect for, uh, Desco is way up there. You recruit Desco by clearing, uh, Chapter 3. Next up, a character that actually showed uh, some development in this uh, this uh, comedic farce of a story. Imizel is the son of President Hugo, and that makes him kind of a big shot. He is uh, primarily focused on stabs, but he also learns four bow skills. He learns four tiers of the uh, three magic elements, fire, wind, and ice. As you can see, I only have him equipped with uh, the default spell and the fourth level spell. That is just to avoid cluttering up his uh, special list with uh, unneeded stuff. You can, see his, uh, you can see his attacks here. Soul Reaper, Grim Spectre, Delta of Death. And wow, that is a kind of a crazy range of effect on that one. Being uh, primarily a caster, his uh, aptitudes favor intelligence and a little bit of resistance. If you taught him a healing spell, he could make a mighty fine healer, I suppose. But really, with, a, with an ability like Concentration, you want him to be a caster. An offensive caster, that is. Magical boost is the counterpart to Val's physical boost. Special magic attack damage increased by 50%, 15%. Not bad. Generate pain uh, recovers SP, a fifth of the damage he took when he takes a when he takes a hit. You probably don't want him to be taking a hit, but uh, this will at least ensure he has SP to spare. Bond of Souls uh, gives him no turn limit when using Magic Change. So uh, if you give him a uh, Magic Change that, uh, you know, if you give him a Magic Change that uh, Magic Changes to Staff, that could work out pretty well for him. But we're not here to show that off. We are here to show off his skills. Here I go. 
First up, Soul Reaper. F level causes uh, amnesia. So yeah, a guy kind of did his job for him. Grim Spectre, which we uh, probably don't want to obliterate everybody right away. You know, I do kind of like a measles skull here there. <laughs> Especially with the uh, the little Hitodama flame at the tip of it. It's pretty cool. Delta of Death. Uh, it's got kind of an unwieldy uh, area of effect, but it's very useful on a certain map in Chapter 9 at the very least. It's got a very cool uh, skeletal jester uh, kaiju form here. And yeah, that was a pretty cool effect there, Amizel. I approve. Bless me. Whoops. So yeah, you recruit Amizel by clearing Chapter 4. Next up, Artina. Artina is sort of a healer, but before you get here, you're definitely going to want a... Either your, either your uh, regular cleric or rutile to do your healing. <laughs> she favors stabs and guns. She learns three tiers of the uh, of the healing magic and six uh, six tiers of gun skills plus the ninth gun skill. So uh, if you want to have her attack, give her a gun. Otherwise, give her a staff, I guess. And of course, you're going to want to equip her with an orb to raise her res stat. Artina's, uh, Artina's main benefit in the postgame, however, is buffing. You can see that her Angel Glitter ability increases stats of adjacent male units by 20%. That's, uh, that's really nothing to sneeze at. Especially when you're still struggling to uh, deal with the Tower of Ord uh, Mount Ordeals 4. Unconditional Love increases her attack by 30%, but uh, reduces the cash that she earns to zero. Her highest uh, aptitude here is Res, but she's also got pretty good SP, Hit, and Speed. In addition to her ability, she also learns Braveheart, Magic Boost, and Target Lock. Which are the uh, the three primary attacking stats? As you can see, I've got them uh, all buffed to uh, plus forty-seven percent, which is pretty nice. Let's be real here. Oh yeah, she also learns Espa, <laughs> which I think most units that learn healing spells also learn Espa, so that's uh, nothing significant really. As for her other abilities. She gets Gold Finger, which doubles the cash you earn uh, by her. And Treasure Hunt, which uh, gives a 30% chance for enemies that she kills to spawn a chest. I kind of prefer Unconditional Love on her. We've never really been strapped for money, especially in the post game. So, uh, yeah, make it that what you will, I guess. That being said, let's she see what her special attacks can do. Opportunity! First up, Mandatory Repo. This is completely justified. 
F level, a decent range of attack, decent range here. The power of lens flare. And not just any lens flare, retra refracted lens flares. Angelic Whip, Wind Element. Let's see it. Finally. A very, uh, unwieldy sort of attack, Goddess Artemis. Let's, uh, let's show it off against both of these guys. She summons an Archangel, I suppose, yeah. So yeah, that's Artina. Not the best attacker, but definitely a valuable ally. That does it for the uh, that does it for the Hades party, which means it's time for me to end this video. Uh, thank you all for watching. Next time we are going to do the uh, the early extra characters. See y'all then.